pinnacle is for all the athletes that we coach is for them to do the best that they're capable of doing. I don't know if you can really describe to see one of your athletes that you've worked with for a number of years, you know them very well, uh, you've seen the work they put into it, and to come down to one moment in time when they are the best at what they do in the entire world, I don't know if I could really describe that and in, in do it justice. There were so many things that he did that were jaw-dropping, remarkable. So at the start of his second year, he started in fall training with us and decided to be not a part of football anymore. In that year, in that first year of college track, he was undefeated indoors. He broke a world indoor record at 400 meters indoors. He won the NCAA championship indoors. He won the outdoor NCAA championship at the 400. He won the Olympic trials in the 400 and he was an Olympic bronze medalist and a gold medalist in the 4x4. There maybe is two or three athletes ever in history of collegiate track and field that have done something like that in their first year. That is an elite group of athletes. Me and my dad's relationship is kind of, it's really, really good. It's surprising because it's like he's coached me when I was in high school. When I started running track, I kind of started because he was at the school. I was like, I stopped playing basketball, and I was like, well, I might as well run track. I might as well do something. And then I learned to love the sport. And it's because of him. It's how he treated the sport, how he made me think about the sport. Watching my sister run, like in high school, I used to go to every single one of her track meets. Like, I traveled. I went to their state meet for the four or five years in a row, like never missed a state meet. So it was almost instilled in me subconsciously before I even knew that I was going to enjoy track, to enjoy it because of how he showed me track. He showed me the fun side of it, how to have fun with it. And when you're having fun with something, you enjoy it, you love it. Like, if you don't love something, you will not put y'all into it. With him running the same event as me, it's kind of neat because we have the same idea kind of on how to run it. The 400 is a sprint. It's a complete sprint. And how he teaches me to run it is if you're not at the 100 or the 200, 300 mark at this time, you're not going to be able to win. It's all about numbers. Like, if you're not here in 10 seconds, you can't be here in 15 seconds. And he's, it's almost broken it down to a science. That's kind of neat because we go to Joy Tech and all that. So we always deal with numbers and equations and all that. But it's almost in the simplest form. It's just, if you don't get here, you can't get here. And it's almost, when you teach somebody that way and when you're sitting there coaching me this way, you can't sit there and knock the numbers. Because he always says, like, I give you the workouts. If you give somebody a workout and they do the workout, and then they go out and they compete a different way than the workout show, it's all mental. Track is one of the most mental sports you will ever get into. Like, regardless of how much you train, your mind can mess it up. You have to be very, very strong mentally, and I think that's what he started, like, what's really sitting in with me right now. And it's always following in his footsteps, regardless of what you're doing. Like, I am in his footsteps. Like, no matter what, when I go down the street and if I meet somebody new in the alumni, it's like, oh, your dad ran here, this, that, and the other. And it's, yeah, it's big shoes. It, it's big shoes when you have somebody who sat there and won Olympic gold medals and all that. Antonio and his father, um, they, they are similar in, in their approach to track. Um, Buddy was the head coach in the program and coached Antonio Sr. throughout his entire uh, career at Georgia Tech and, and a good bit of it beyond in his professional career. Um, so I've had Antonio um, in the program as a head coach and they're both incredible people, uh, very competitive, great work ethic, and we couldn't have been prouder to have both of them in the program and we're delighted that we've had that opportunity. A lot of people don't know that Georgia Tech's track team is probably one of the biggest staples in the national field. They treat us very well in recruiting budgets, travel budgets, equipment budget. Our facility is state of the art. Uh, they support the program and they want us to do well. We're expected to do well and be competitive and it's very appreciated. Tech being 
Tech really has been an instrumental part of my life. You know, just growing up, I was always rooting against Georgia, always watching the games, been at the track. I have videos of me just running around the track when I was little. So I think the tradition of my family going here is a strong part of me. And I love it for my children, but at the same time, it's still their choice. It's neat actually being here too, because you see the big name people come back. Like, if you come out to our track on any given day, you'll see a handful of professionals. You see Angelo come out sometimes, Terrence Chamel comes out. These are both world champions. Like, it's to just sit there and be around that atmosphere, it makes you elevate your work of play. I know Coach Page's group trains with him. So if you're standing in the blocks against a guy who has the fastest reaction time ever posted, you're either going to get out or you're going to get left. You go into Coach Hensel's office and you see the plaques on it. You see all the pictures on his wall. And you just see, you can just go down them. Just look at the times and look at the people. And you see national champions. You see Olympic gold medalists. You see world champions. It's, it's kind of, you can sit there in awe or you can sit there and you can choose to do something about it. And what we do at Georgia Tech is you sit there and you try to become that next piece on that wall. In our program, we try to keep the guys reminded of the great ones that have come before them and that they're here to carry on that great tradition. One thing our distance group does every day is we have the marathon stone down at the entrance to the track. That was cut from a quarry in Greece where the marathon was finished and they they touch that every day coming into the track and going out of the track. It's hard balancing track and academics, but at the same time, it's what we came here to do. So you always have to keep in mind that it's always school first and anything you do. So it's just going to class, making sure you get the work done, then you go to the track. I mean, it's about 20 hours of track every week, and then you go to classes. But you get the balance after a few years. Like, I've been here long enough to kind of understand it. So you get to see the same lifestyle, the same college lifestyle as your parents saw it, as your sister saw it. And it's almost just like, with the athletics into it, it's like, it just, it molds you to an even better person. Because it's, it's like a double-edged sword. Like, you have the academics, you have the schooling, and it just, you, it forces you to do as much as you can. My college coach, one of my college coaches, um, late in my senior year, asked me if I wanted to go out to Eugene, Oregon with him that summer and watch the United States 1976 Olympic trials. And the thought of doing that had never really crossed my mind, but I, I gave it some thought. So we flew out to Eugene. Um, we watched eight days of phenomenal track and field, attended a coaching clinic, and when I got on the plane to head back to Michigan from that meet, I knew exactly what I wanted to do in my career. It was just an incredible week. It's pretty interesting, me and Coach Senzel's relationship, because like I said before, he's known me ever since I was little, like running around the track. So like, I'll just go in his office sometimes, sit down, just have conversations with him, just about school, family, anything, just because it's almost like he's a support system for me as well. So it's always good to have that at school, you know? There's been so many times we just sat there in the office, heard a few of Coach Hensel's stories. It's weird, because I've never heard the same story almost. Like, he has so many stories, his memory's like, a, it's like an encyclopedia. It's like he has so much information to give out to people. He's gonna put you in the mindset to run. And I think just the story about how athletes that he coached had the motivation to sit there and help out their own teammate is kind of what's instilled in us today. So through his stories, it's almost like he puts us where we need to be. The part of track, being a track and field coach that I enjoy the most is walking out of the office and heading to the track every afternoon and working with incredible young men. Antonio Jr.'s expectations were no different than any other athlete coming in with his level of accomplishment into the program. It had nothing to do with what his father had done. He's not his dad, his dad's not him, but his level of accomplishment in high school, we have expectations based on where we think we can go from there. 
and that that was no different than any other athlete in the program. My dad really wasn't a, a contrib- like a big factor in me picking track because I chose different sports as I was growing up, but his times and all that really aren't even a factor as well because I feel like it's me motivating myself. I feel like you have to be motivated by yourself to do anything well. So it's a good thing to see, but at the same time, you have to do your own thing. You have to set your own path. Antonio Jr. didn't take part in track and field until his junior year in high school. So he got a very late start. What he did in two years of high school, what he accomplished, was really quite remarkable for only being a part of it two years. His father, on the other hand, took part in track from his freshman year on through. And that's a big difference. Two in four years is major. So Antonio Jr. came a long way in a very short period of time. And I think his dad's background and knowledge of coaching that event was huge in his development. It's kind of weird coming here too, because it was my mom and dad met here. Like their story of meeting was kind of funny. Like walking down the hill, dad and mom saw each other. Almost like one of the stories you hear in like the movies. And then surprisingly, my sister came here, ran track. My dad ran track here. So it's just like me kind of following in their footsteps. It's kind of like it's almost like a pride thing. It's it's a big rivalry between us to a certain extent because I wouldn't let him beat me. There's no way. I, I know he's ran a faster time than me, but. It's that competitive mindset, like, you can't let your dad beat you. Like, even when we used to play basketball growing up, like, that day I beat him was, like, the best day of my childhood career. Like, I remember it like it was yesterday. So it's just, I really want this year, even in, like, just at, at the track, I want to beat his time. So I just sit there and call him up and laugh about it. It'll be a great, it'll be my moment. <laughs> Antonio McKay, Jr. for Georgia Tech. I think it's huge having support from your family. Like in any endeavor I've done, I've always had a strong backbone. Regardless if I felt weak in a certain situation, I always had them to pick me up. And it's, it's, it's key, I think, in anybody's life. So I really appreciate all the support that I've gotten from my family.